Now let's take a look at a few special cases that allow us to estimate the cash flow associated with a stock so that we can compute the value of the stock. The first special case we're going to look at is a constant dividend company. So a constant dividend means that the company will pay the same dollar amount forever, a constant dividend. So uh, a good example of that is a preferred stock. Uh, if a company pays a say 4% preferred stock, that means you'll pay $4 in dividend every single year forever. Um, since the dollar amount is the same and it lasts forever, the cash flow is a perpetuity. And we already know how to value perpetuity. Uh, one of the things, so if you don't remember the formula, it's a good idea to um, make a note of that, make sure that you have the formula. So here's a reminder that the present value of a perpetuity is the cash flow amount divided by the discount rate. Another assumption, and of course, assuming that dividend amount is going to be constant forever is not realistic for a lot of company. If one of the main reasons that people give for buying stock is that as the company expands and grow, so will the dividend amount. So the next case that we're going to look at is a constant dividend growth case. In this case, we assume that the, the firm will not pay the same dividend amount each year, but instead the growth rate will be constant. So the company is going to pay dividend. We assume that dividend will increase each year, which is what we expect to do, uh, the company will do if the company is a growing company. The assumption we make here is that the rate of growth is meaning the, the, the increased amount, the rate of growth for dividend is constant. So if the company uh, pays a um, dollar in dividend today and it increases it by 5%, then next year you'll pay $1.05 and you'll keep growing at 10% per year. So the rate of growth is what is assumed to be constant. Uh, we assume that, so that type of cash flow is a new, is a new type of cash flow is called a growing perpetuity. So in this case, I, uh, because the amount changes over time, I want to emphasize the, um, the relative time period. So in here, the present value of a growing perpetuity today is equal to the cash flow amount starting in year one, divided by, again, the discount rate or the interest rate. But here we have an additional factor. The additional factor here is called the growth rate. So the denominator is the growth rate, is the re required return minus the growth rate. So you can see the similarities between the two cases. In the first case, there's no growth. So of course, in the first case, there's no growth. The growth, the growth rate is simply zero. So we don't have to worry about it. In the second case, we have a growth rate and we need to take that into account. So we have two, two special cases, the constant dividend where the stock doesn't change or the stock dividend doesn't change. And the second case is the constant dividend growth, in which case the dividend will change, but the growth rate of the dividend would not change. And the last case is called a supernormal growth model. And in this case, we assume that the dividend growth rate is not constant initially, uh, but eventually it will settle down to a constant growth rate eventually. Uh, this last growth model is, uh, this last model um, is more of a framework rather than an assumption. Um, and in fact, the good news is that this last framework, uh, we can use it to evaluate any stock. Now let's take a look at each of these special cases um, individually. Uh, we will start with the constant dividend case and we're gonna uh, look at an example. So as we said earlier, the constant dividend case assume that growth rate is zero, it doesn't change. Um, it's most commonly found in preferred stock. Um, the value of the stock is, uh, is the present value and therefore we can evaluate it based on uh, the formula we know for a perpetuity. Notice that in the book, um, they simply replace the cash flow with uh, C, which stands for cash flow with D, which is dividend. So all we are saying is that the cash flow for a stock is dividend. So you can memorize yet another formula. You can understand that the cash flow in this case is dividend and therefore um, be able to um, apply the concept and the formula in a much general setting. So let's take a look at a stock. So let's say you have a stock that pays 50 cents in dividend every quarter and the required return on this stock is 10% per year. And since you received um, dividend on a quarterly basis, the 
10% need to be divide, uh, converted into a quarterly rate. So 10% per year translate into, um, so there are four quarters per year, so that is 2.5% per quarter. And so in here, our discount rate is 2.5%, which is 0.25. Again, when you're using a formula, you need to convert all the percentages into decimals. The present value or the price of the stock today is the cash flow dividend, 50 cents, divided by the required return, 2.5%. So the price of the stock is $20. So the constant dividend is, is relatively straightforward. Next, we're going to look at take a look at an example of um, constant dividend growth model. So in the constant dividend growth model, dividend is expected to grow at the exact rate, the constant rate forever. So if you know the dividend at any point in time, you can, you can estimate future dividend. So dividend in year one is dividend in year zero times one plus the growth rate. So for example, if the growth rate is 5%, then dividend and dividend in year one is a dollar, uh, dividend in year zero is a dollar, then dividend in year one will be a dollar five. Um, dividend in year two will simply be dividend in year one times dividend in year two um, will be dividend in year one times one plus the growth rate. We can extend this analogy using the exponential growth or future value formula. So we can find the dividend at any point in time. So if dividend in year five will simply be dividend in year zero, growing at the same growth rate for um, five years. And the value of the dividend today is the value of a growing perpetuity. So remember that the, growing, the value of a growing perpetuity today is equal to dividend in year one, divided by the required return minus the growth rate. If we don't have dividend in year one, we can still estimate that because dividend in year one is simply dividend in year zero times one plus the growth rate. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples to help us um, become more familiar with this model. So today we have a company called Big D. It just pay a dividend of 50 cents. And to keep things simple, we're going to assume that both dividend um, will be paid on an annual basis and the growth rate occur once per year. Um, we can use quarterly compounding as well. Uh, it just um, is more steps in computing that. So to keep the focus on understanding stock valuation, we will assume that um, in this special case, dividend is paid on a, on a per year basis and growth rate occurs on a per year basis. So we assume that dividend is going to increase by 2% per year, and the market requires a 15% return. So this is the required return, 15%, which we'll use as our um, discount rate. So the question is, how much should the stock be selling for today? We know that we are looking for the price of the stock today, so that means we, are, we need to find the present value of this cash flow. So we know dividend is 50 cents. Here it says it just paid, so that's past tense. That means this already occurred. So we know the 50 cents is dividend in year zero because we just paid this amount. So the, the, um, we, can we can infer the, when the payment occur uh, from the first sentence. So it just paid, therefore that was dividend in year zero is 50 cents. Um, we know that we need dividend in year one uh, in order to find the future, uh, the price of the stock today. We need D1. If dividend is 50 cents in year zero, and we know that it's going to increase by 2% per year. So 2% on 50 cents is 1 cent. Uh, so again, you don't need to do that in your head. You can use the calculator. So dividend in year one turns out to be 51 cents. That's really what we need. Um, and then we can find the present value of this growing perpetuity. So the present value is equal to, for a growing perpetuity, it is equal to dividend in year one, so that is 51 cents, divided by the required return. The required return in this case is 15%. Since we're using a formula, we will need to use convert that to a decimal. Minus the growth rate, so that's 
two percent. Um, so we have 51 cents is a dividend in year one divided by the denominator, which is now 0.13. It turns out that the price of the stock today is worth $3.92. So here's our first example. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's say you have another company and this company is expected to pay a dividend of $2 in one year and dividend is expected to grow at 5% per year. We also know the required return is 20%. What is the price of the stock today? So just like we did before, we want to gather all the information. So here we have $2 in dividend, and the big question is whether that is dividend in year zero or dividend in year one. Here, if we read this first sentence, we can infer that, so this tells us that dividend is expected the company is expected to pay dividend so in one year so this is pretty clear this is dividend in year one so the two dollars in this case is dividend in year one we know that the growth rate is five percent so it's useful to write down all the information and the required return is 20 percent so we have everything we need to compute the price of the stock today so the price of the stock today is the present value of $2 divided by the required return, again, that's 20%, so that's 0.2, minus the growth rate, which is 5%, so that's 0.05. And that means it's $2 divided by 15 cents, uh, 0.15, sorry, and that turns out to be $13.33. So we can see from these two examples, again, we want to familiar, our, familiarize ourselves with the different factors that affect stock price. So you see that there are three main factors. One is the dividend growth rate. And dividend growth rate is positively related to stock price, and that's pretty obvious. The faster or the larger the company grow, the more valuable it is, so the higher will be the stock price. The other is the required return. The required return is negative related to stock price, and this is because the required return is the discount rate. So the higher the discount rate, the lower the present value. Now let's take a look at one last example, which adds a slight complexity to the constant growth model. So the first part of this is relatively straightforward. It's something that you have done before. So pause the video now and try to answer this question on your own. So you know a dividend, you know a company is paying $4 in dividend, growth rate is 6%, the required return is 16%. Let's find out what the price of the stock is today. So pause it now. All right, welcome back. So Israel is, as I said, this is similar to what we have done before. So we know there's $4 in dividend. So the big question is whether or not that's dividend in year one or dividend in year zero. Since it says that it's expected to pay next period, so the next period is year one. So the $4 is dividend in year one. And we know that the growth rate is 6% and the required return is 16%. So again, we want to write those information down. So the growth rate is 6%, the required return is 16%. So we can find the price of the stock today, which is $4 divided by the required return minus the growth rate. So that's $4 divided by 0.1 and that give us the price of the stock today, which is $40. So hopefully all of you get $40. Now let's go to the next part of this problem. So the same problem, the same company, so remember the information is $4 in dividend, growth rate of 6%, and a required return of 16%. Now what we want to find out is what is the price of the stock in year four? Now, the important thing to understand here is that if we're looking for the price in year four, so we are essentially trying to find the present value as of year four. So in order to find the price in year four, what year dividend do we need? If you buy the stock in year four, the first dividend you will receive will be dividend in year five. So this is a very important concept for both perpetuity and growing perpetuity. You invest in year four, your first dividend payment will be in year five. There's always a one year difference. Other than that, everything else is the same for this problem. 
So what you translate into then is finding what dividend is in year five. So we know that the price in year four is related to the dividend in year five. So if I'm looking for the dividend in year five, um, we what we have, what we know today is that dividend in year one is four dollars. So we need to find out what dividend in year five will be. Well, between year five and year one, how many years are there? The total of four years, right? So we know that dividend in year five will start at 4% and it's going to grow at a growth rate. Again, um, it's useful to write down all the information from the last, from the last page. So the growth rate is 6% um, and the required return is 16%. So it's, it is, it, is much easier to have all the numbers in front of us. So we know that the dividend you will start at four dollars and it's going to increase at six percent between year five and year one. There are four years, so it's going to grow by um, four times. So that turns that will allow us to compute the dividend in um, year five. So dividend in year five is five dollars and four point nine cents. Now that we know dividend in year five, we can find out the price in year four. So the price in year four is five dollars and four point nine cents divided by the required return of sixteen percent minus the growth rate of six percent. So that is just point one. So the price of our stock in year four is about fifty dollars and forty nine cents. So what is important in here is to know that the, the relationship between price and future dividend. So we can find the price of a stock at any point in time when it fits the constant growth model. This is particularly important when we look at the next case. We'll end the video now and in the next video we're going to go over the special case, the last special case.